on occasion of this uh, national youth day and in this function organized by the adivakta parishad today we have uh, honorable anil singh the additional solicitor general of india the former chairman of a bar council an all time leader of a bar council of my own personal friend also shri aninje ananji naik my another friend anjali madam amok singh and all on all, all brother advocates and sisters when this seminar is organized on this occasion of a national youth day and when we are remembering the memories of swami vivekananda as a advocate we must be honest to the heart of our own heart as a professionals that we have to deliver a justice because the thought of the swami vivekananda we all know and lawyer advocate being a main instrument in a delivery in a justice delivery system should be very keen on reassessing the civil trial <coughs> because today's my subject is civil pleading so i'll come to the civil trial first and then i will come to the specific topic of the pleading also i'm specifically mentioning this because now the today's condition of a civil trial as a advocate is that we are not able to deliver the justice through civil trial is an allegation against the system we have made an assessment what is the life of a civil trial in a country and if it starts from the trial court and if it is to be ended at a supreme court <coughs> it is a statistical data of the high court the average age of litigation is 25 to 30 years including the execution proceedings i completed 37 years of practice conducted main civil trials civil appeals in a trial court at nasik thousands of decree was obtained was contested in my this professional life but if you ask me how many decree i could have been executed the number is very few and that must be of course the case of the every advocate and therefore the reasons are to be discussed by the lawyers only the advocates only the judges only because the law makers who believe in this civil procedure code made in 1908 they made certain changes you know that in 1976 one of the major assessment of the civil code was done then in a 90 in a 1998 and then 2002 the substantial amendment was made in the civil procedure code <coughs> and ultimately supreme court has to deliver a judgment that unless we go for a speedy trial we are not doing a justice to the clients and the litigants and it has been now declared or it is a law of the land that under article 21 speedy justice is also a fundamental right of the litigant 
फॉर्म नंबर फोर्टी सेवन ची स्पेसिफिक परफॉर्मेंस फोर्टी सेवन एंड फोर्टी एट टू फॉर्मेट्स आर देयर नंबर दोन च कॉलम है द प्लेटिव हेज एप्लाइड टू डिफेन्डंट स्पेसिफिकली टू परफॉर्म द एग्रीमेंट ऑन हिज पार्ट बट डिफेन्डंट हेज नॉट डन सो टू थ्री प्लेटिव हेज बीन स्टील रेडी एंड विलिंग स्पेसिफिकली टू परफॉर्म द एग्रीमेंट ऑन हिज पार्ट ऑफ विच द डिफेन्डंट हेज नोटिस दिस इज फॉर्म नंबर फोर्टी सेवन फॉर्म नंबर फोर्टी एट स्लाइट वेरिएशन टू फॉर्मेट्स आर देयर the question is that it is a part of the civil procedure code and you must plead accordingly that is a point if you are not observing these five lines and writing 50 pages your plaint is useless this is not my opinion sorry this has been said supreme court you just make a search on your own computer if your your plaint is is not in accordance to form number 47 or 48 what is the result you will find out one case specific performance was granted it was confirmed it went to supreme court and this point was agitated that it is not in accordance to 47 readiness willingness nasel ta dawa urto surto karan to fakt 47 48 var avlambu nahi hai te je hai na the plaintiff is ready and willing to perform his part of contract is not only it is also dependent on cpc appendix a but it is also dependent on another law mandatory law which law specific performance law under section 16 it has been said that you must plead and prove ata tya te amend jhali you must prove mantle tanni ata affirm and prove asa kai te plead card lai shabda doesn't makes any difference because unless there is a plead pleading it cannot be proved that is a now simple interpretation of that amendment also but that is a mandate given in section 16 that you must if you want to claim a specific performance you must plead and prove that you are ready and willing that is a requirement so that must be kept in your mind that is also there in a appendix a and therefore you should plead all that thing i am ready and willing tayar आणि काय म्हणायचं मराठीत जर असेल प्लेडिंग तर मी तयार आहे आणि उत्सुक आहे तयार आणि उत्सुक आहे फरक माहिती आहे ना तुम्हाला सरांनी आम्हाला उदाहरण सांगितलेलं आहे तुम्हाला सांगून टाकतो स्विमिंग करायला निघालो स्विमिंग टँकवर गेलो स्विमिंग कॉस्ट्युम घातला मी तयार झालो का नाही झालो रेडी पण पाण्याचं जुडीने मारली पाण्यात जाऊन बसलो आणि पाय हलवत बसलो पाण्याशी मी काय झालो रेडी झालो तयार झालो विलिंग आहे का पाण्यात जोपर्यंत उडी मारत नाही तोपर्यंत विलिंग नाही तोपर्यंत कम्प्लायन्स नाही रेडी अँड विलिंग सो इन अकॉर्डन्स टू दॅट द लॉ इज डेव्हलप रेडी आहे म्हणजे माझ्याजवळ पैसे आहेत हे दाखवलं पाहिजेत आहे माझ्याकडे पैसे आहेत माझ्याकडे हे ॲसेट आहेत माझी प्रॉपर्टी आहे मला त्याला दहा लाख रुपये द्यायचे आहेत माझी इथे सोय आहे हे लिहिलं पाहिजे तुम्ही प्लेनिंगमध्ये आणि विलिंग म्हणजे माझी तयारी आहे द्यायला द्यायची पैसे आहेत परंतु तयारी नाही का उपयोग आहे दॅट इज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ दॅट यू हॅव टू प्लेड दॅट आय एम विलिंग सो बोथ थिंग्स आर देअर बट नाव आय वॉज पॉइंटिंग आउट दॅट हे लिहिलं तुम्ही आणि दोन नंबरचा पॅरा नाही लिहिला तर काय होईल तुम्ही केस शोधा सुप्रीम कोर्टाने ती केस परत पाठवून दिलेली आहे सांगण्याचा उद्देश हा आहे की ते अपेंडिक्स जे आहे ना ते त्या सिव्हिल प्रोसिजर कोर्टचा पार्ट आहे जसा ऑर्डर सेवनमध्ये रूल वन म्हणतं की प्लेंट असं असलं पाहिजे त्याचप्रमाणे ऑर्डर सेवनचा रूल दोन म्हणतो की ते अपेंडिक्स ए प्रमाणेच असलं पाहिजे इट्स नॉट अ डिस्क्रिप्शनरी गाईड गिवन टू यू के लागलं तर असं असं प्लेन तयार करा नाही अँड लक्षात ठेवा इफ यू आर नॉट फॉलोईंग ऑल दिस मॅन्डेट ऑफ लॉ 
and if your suit is not succeeded, to reject zala. Jawab dari kona jee. Vakila chee. Professional misconduct rule shakto. Jawab dari lakshat theva. Anek prakar jab professional misconduct aajkal vakila la face karave lagta. Pakshakar pan shani dali let. Tanaya saga gusti sagnare shani vakil pan hai. Ani mati tum cha am cha bhoti pasti section. महाराष्ट्र नंबर दोन लाए कुछ उत्तर प्रदेश नंतर सर आपला नंबर है डिसिप्लिनरी इन्क्वायरीज में दे और सगाई जस्ट साठ टके कंट्रीब्यूशन मुंबई से है फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन सरनाज कौन टेस सब्जेक्ट में बोलो लमाइट नहीं पर टाइटल वो एक दा सरन से लेक्चर ठेवा टाइटल सर्टिफिकेट बदल चाहे you will be responsible. So in a three part, the civil procedure is designed and therefore it is a code, sections, orders, appendix. Is it an end of the civil procedure code? Kazun kai raila. Code manu nata teen goshti paile apad. Sections paile, orders paile, appendix se paile. Ata kai raila. Yes. Civil manual is not a part of the code. It is important, but it is an independent document. It is made by High Court. This is a, this is a central act. That is a, each High Court manuals, procedures. Bombay High Court will have different manual. It is important. I am coming, going to come to the manual part, but still something remains for the purpose of the understanding of the scheme of the CPC as a code, something remains. Kai Rayleigh? Which annexure? No. Index Bhagata. Index Samto. Tarimi Manto Kai Rayleigh. Appendix Nantar Index Sampla. CPC Sampla ithe. Still me manto kai raila. High court amendments I clet kadi? I clet na. It's a part of that. You can go to section 121 to 135 of the civil procedure code where high courts are empowered to make the procedural amendments and they are very important. I will give two, three examples to impress how they are important and tikde zapa da dul lakshya hota and khara skillful advocacy se ka abhaya na to high court amendment maza hai pustak asa gya va ka jajad maharashtra cha amendment as til ke wa state cpc ya ni crpc ya na government publication cha jaya na bear act best tumala side la techa bombay high court cha amendment ni itke chan dile la hai ki ya section la hi section la ta nahi hai 9a chi hoti ti ke liya ta Orders plus again amendments are and very useful, practical, and you can effectively do your advocacy, skillful advocacy. I'll give you one example. Cavet. Cavet astanna ex parte order hot nai. Cavet sa kya purpose hai? Ki this defendant opponent is likely to file a suit against me. In case of filing of a suit, give me notice. No ex parte order should be passed. Okay. The question is that, is there any provision? Tum chaka dekha da client ala, khup ati arjant hai, samor chani cavit ke lehen, tumala korta karna interim order gehi chi hai, to tum cha paanyat kaya laga? Tiyavel is kaya karay cha? Kona cha kaya paanyat ala? Nai paanyat ala? Kaya kudi vapar ke lehe kadi? नहीं वापर के लाये माँ माँ आता ही थे स्कोप आये तो मला स्किलफुल एडवोकेसी ला समझा ऐसे दोनों साला कि कैबिट अस्तान तुम्हें एक आधे एक्सपार्टी इंजेक्शन से मिलो ला तो तो पक्षकार तुम सा आयुष्य भर पक्षकार मनुन कायम राई कि आप ले वकीला नहीं कैबिट अस्तान ना माला इंजेक्शन क्यों दिला एक्सपार्टी there is an amendment to order 40, 40, 40A, 40A, 
order which is in the form of a caveat rules bombay high court amendment and in this amendment you will find that there is a provision ki if there is a really a genuine case some six or seven rule is there you can make a appeal a argument to the court that use this discretion and give me caveat also if you can use the civil manual in a civil manual also there is para 27 in which civil manual is practically a direction to the or guide to the judge and the ministerial staff but it is of course available to you if the judge is not using that discretion you can always point out to him that see paragraph 27 of the manual there also the discretion is given that if some urgent matter comes and caveat is there in spite of caveat you can pass an ex parte injunction notice can be given the further compliance can be done that is a different thing so that that must be known to you you will know this only if you know that such type of a high court amendment is there <clears throat> another one example many examples are there but important things which you are regularly using i am pointing out two three example suppose injunction is given in favor of plaintiff and defendant makes a breach of an injunction in an order what is the remedy you got the point if injunction is given to the plaintiff and defendant makes a breach of that injunction what is the remedy for the plaintiff defense can be struck out contempt can be filed okay normally what we normally do we file a contempt then defense is to be struck out where this provision it is under order 39 rule 11 and order 39 rule 11 is a amendment high court amendment you will not get it in a central act he pustak jo tumhi challe order 39 gaadli order 39 order 10 la te thambun jata order 39 rule 10 it will stop there you want 11 you will have to go to the book with a high court amendment if you take this book with a high court amendment you will get rule number 11 which says that if defendant causes a breach of injunction struck down his defense and plaintiff causes any breach dismiss the suit you are doing contempt applications what is a contempt it you know that the bombay high court has said that it cannot be a part and parcel of the same suit correct no, sir you have to go for another miscellaneous application independent miscellaneous application because it's a independent inquiry so again you will file that another litigation will be there ultimately tyala jail madhe takne karta dawa hai ka apla dawa apla decree karta hai ma better remedy kay ahe struck down kara na defense defense struck down dhala manje tumchi decree so softly pude janar so this particular aspect is important and therefore you should know that order 39 rule 11 is important also last one example to impress you that how it is important suppose there is one suit <coughs> a file suit against b c and d for suppose a partition and in this suit now this defendant b c and d wants to claim against plaintiff what they can do counter claim you know that order 8 rule 6 a b c d my question is different if amongst b c d if some claim is there they don't want to claim against the plaintiff they want to claim against the b c d co defendants my question is this is it possible it is possible 
but not logically. If you say that it is possible, then court will say, show me the provision. So you should find out the provision. In order 8, counterclaim is from order 6A onwards. And if you go to the Central Act, you will find that order 8 is up to 11 or 10 rule. 10. Order 8, Rule 10. If you go to the Bombay High Court amendment, after this Rule 10, Rule 11 to 35 is a Bombay High Court amendment. And it's a complete independent procedure. You will find that there is a third party procedure. Third party, if it is to be brought into suit, we can norm what we normally do is uh, implementing the party application. That is not a very regular way. You should adopt that third party procedure, which is a very easy procedure and a convenient procedure. And in that procedure, you will find that there is also one rule which says that inter se co defendant, the counterclaim is permissible. So you should know that these 11 to 36 rules are there. So this is something about a bird eye view on the basically on the part of the civil procedure code and one should always understand as a lawyer that when it is used as a code, whenever it is used as a code, you can have a Maharashtra land revenue code, find out what is there. You can have a civil criminal procedure code, find out what is there. <coughs> it is not only the sections given, there is something material which is a part of the that particular scheme and everything can be used as a scheme of the civil procedure code just like what we have seen that we can use the sections we can use an orders we can use an appendix we can use the high court amendments and then that is a civil manual civil manual is an independent document but a very useful document exhibit Upon Kaitri Manto, to Kaitri Manto, civil procedure code Madidila, Pruzhala, Naizala. Commissioner Sir Kam Karaisa. Commissioner Sir Report Allah. Purava Kasa Gaita. Tela exhibit Daichaka. Commissioner Nikaikai Karaisa. Notice Kashi Daichi. All these details are there in a civil manual. Very elaborate details. And if you use that details, you will find out that it is very useful. Even for the today's topic, civil pleading, Vadi Pratiwadi Che number kashi lai che? Apan kashi lai to 2 A, B, C, D, Mapuna D madla, Roman 1, 2, 3, 4, asa lai to na kadi kadi haa mela. Tani saadha lai lai ki simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, asa number dai che? Vadi kitiya sot, pratiwadi kitiya sot. Not like this, 2 A, B, C, D. If a clever ministerial staff is there, he will not accept your plaint. And now you forget about the staff now. Now it's a computer. The orders are given to the computer that this, this type of a plaint will be there, it will be accepted. If you are not drafting properly, it will not be accepted. Your job has become more specialized and more skillful. So you have to see how the plaints are to be written, how the title are to be given, how the number is to be given, how the description of the property is to be written. Order 7 specifically speaks about the plaint. And Rule 2 talks about the description of an immovable property. Rule 3. three. Rule 3. Yes. Correct, sir. I am sorry. Rule 3 talks about the description of the property. Now in a Central Act, Rule 3 is there. You can go to the Maharashtra Amendment also. There is also amendment to Rule 3 of the Bombay High Court Amendment. Farak ka hai? Farak ka hai ne? sangit le ki number dya, correct dya, boundaries dya. Maharashtra Amendment madhe ek azun line tak le liya hai. If it is a suit for the encroachment, Filing of map is mandatory. Filing of map is mandatory. You should know that. 
you are drafting because now the computer will not accept your suit of an encroachment if your map is not there because now the command is given to the computer that it must be as per order 7 rule 3 maharashtra amendment so you should know that when you are making a pleading so these aspects of the formats and the pleadings are equally important only three orders you can see as far as the civil pleadings are concerned and there is some basic principles are there i will come to that basic principles but before that <clears throat> i will make an appeal that as a civil practitioner when you are drafting a particular suit or a written statement the perfection initially it was a law or a principle or a policy still it is law and a policy your pleading must be very precise and perfect but now the times have changed kana lile chat mhanun pannas pana je dave karayche ka this is a question for that purpose there is one very good video of senior counsel janak dwarkadas on youtube he was a junior to fali nariman sir and he has given an exercise of dealing with a client for taking an instructions if our instructions are perfect your pleading is perfect ikacha kanani aikla ani computer la type kela to your pleading is going to be defective what he suggested in that video fali nariman sir had a particular style of working once a client comes with a new brief he used to give him in a half hour ani to kay bolto ye te aikat raycha tala thambaycha nahi aikat raycha then he used to tell the junior to note down the dates and the incidents important incidents that incidents along with the dates was given to him then again he will ask the client for a next meeting and he will very softly make a cross examination of his own client and find out the correct truth karan tumcha hi anubhav asel pakshakar pahilya betit kai khara bolat nahi pan tani khara bollo pahije te tela bolota alo pahije आणि तो क्लायंट म्हणून पळून न जाता बोलवता आलं पाहिजे हे तर हे काय तू तुझ्या विरोधात आहे हे तर काय तू तू चुकीचंच केलेलं आहे हे तर काय तू खड्ड्यातच गेलास हे संपलं तुझं का तो म्हणेल आणा साहेब मी जातो तशी परिस्थिती असली तरी यू हॅव टू टॅकल हे तुझ्या विरुद्ध येऊ शकतं आणि आलं तर तुझं नुकसान होऊ शकतं याला उत्तर काय हे तुझ्या विरुद्ध दिसत आहे आपल्याला याला उत्तर द्यावं लागेल समोरचं आणील तुझ्या विरुद्धचे सगळे मुद्दे समोरचा आणील त्याचं उत्तर आत्ताच तयार तर करून ठेव असं एक 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 तुम्ही ज्यावेळेस त्याला विचाराल त्यावेळेस त्याची माहिती येते अँड देन सु जनक दारकादास सर सेज दॅट ही विल पॉईंट आऊट दॅट इम्पॉर्टंट फॅक्ट्स देन फली नरिमन सर यूज टू राईट विथ इज ओन हँड विदाऊट युझिंग स्टेनो डेट इन्सिडंट वन कॉलम third column uh, document oblique witness and then he used to write it had hi tarikh ha mudda hi tarikh ha mudda date wise a date wise incidents then the instruct then the whatever the material part is there very short short and related which document which witness this statement he used to prepare and it has been said by janak darkadas sir that we have seen that not once but 10 10 times this factual assessment and its serial numbers was arranged by fali nariman sir sometime it's a word of janak dwarkadas sometime we feel that is this old man mad doing again and again same thing arranging facts but 
one thing we understood by this exercise that fact is the foundation of every case it may be a trial civil or criminal it may be an appeal or it may be a constitutional matters fali nariman sir was a constitutional lawyer and he never opened this particular facts while arguing the matter he only argued the law but while arguing the law by referring the case laws he always have a complete bracket of the this factual aspects and whatever the factual matrix are there in the back of his mind that was his skill and therefore whatever case or authority was citing was not beyond the scope of his own facts this is the most important skill required to be developed for making the pleadings in the suit whatever you are writing you must understood that you will have to prove this whatever words i am using whatever line i am putting i will have to prove it it's my pleading i can't take it back it's my admission given as if in a witness box i am stating standing and i am saying that this is this is this is a fact whatever this statement i am making accordingly i am making in a writing and a written pleading is conclusive fact is a conclusive admission you can't go back from that for amending that particular facts also you have a very restrictions you can't deviate yourself that is the rule of the pleading whatever you have you have pleaded departure from the pleading is not permissible under rule C, order 6 rule 7 if i am not wrong so on this basis your facts must be perfect and on this perfect facts you must plead properly some of the important aspects which is which is guided by order 6 which you all of you knows but again and again as said by janak dwarkada sir we must go on repeating we must go on reading we must go on telling to each other without bothering that are it ye to mahiti aplyala no mahiti asla tari jya ves kama chi vel ete teva apan tya basna very deviate hoto so the the order 6 says that plead facts and not evidence sage manta to okay correct hai pan lehchi vel ali ka apan purava देखी ज्यादे कॉम्प्यूटर मधे लिखो हि हैबिट हा माइंडसेट बदलला पाजे आ जितक शॉर्ट प्लीट प्लेन करता है, रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट करता है, तो करना चाहिए प्रयत्न किया जो बेसिक रूल्स अपन लक्षा ठेवल कि फैक्ट प्लीड कराएगी है हा करार महत्वा शर्ती है दैट्स ऑल क्या शर्ती ने प्लीडिंग कराएगी गरज नहीं फै प्लीड फैक्ट्स and not an evidence rule 2 says that use format appendix a is a format beyond appendix a whatever your own pleadings are there particulars which are required to be pleaded that must be pleaded if you are pleading particularly a fraud then that must be in detail but if you are pleading something else a particulars must be given all details need not be given then there should not be a departure rule 7 says that no whatever you have pleaded there should not be a departure from that in a plaint alternative form insist inconsistent pleadings are permissible or not permissible permissible in a for as an alternate remedy but when you will have to lead the evidence you will have to take up one line you will have to elect that on this particular aspect i am alternate inconsistent pleadings are permitted evidence is not permitted that must be kept in your mind whatever the presumptions of law are there whatever is said to be presumed by the law under the evidence act the judicial notices or any presumptions which are there in an evidence act that need not be pleaded your signatures your verification has very important role as far as the junior lawyers are concerned verification and its form स्पेसिफिकली जितके तुम्हें पैरा लिहेले हैं वर कलम एक ते सवीस मधे लिहेला मजकूर मजा स्वतः महती प्रमाण खरा और बराबर है हा पर्टिक्युलर फॉर्म मधे कि इंग्लिश मधे तो जो का फॉर्म दिल्ला है 
in that particular format your verification must be very particular on 14a and <coughs> 16 rule of order 6 give a thought to vacha ekda tumhi jaun ata aplyala vel nahi tevda vachayla 14a madhe ahe register addresses of the parties tala pan bombay high court ji amendment hai 14a la sir ahe bombay high court ne amendment dile sagle jast suit cha khatma kashat hot asel to to addresses parbar na dilyamule hotoy summons consumes or summons and order So, Order 14A is relating to the particular aspect of the register address of the parties. And for that particular purpose, you must keep in your mind that once you give an incorrect address, means you are delaying your own suit for another six months. So, the notice will go, the report will come. The report which will show that it is not served, then another notice by another mode will be sent on the same address. This exercise will take a time and ultimately after six months, eight months, one year you will say that no, this is not a correct address, some another address is there. So your suit may be delayed for filing for eight days, fifteen days. Your insistence must be that your addresses must be correct. Now you can take the alternate modes also. You can simultaneously go for the register post address. Your application should go along with the suit itself. Suit summons is mandatory. You must send first suit summons through belief only. But alternate summons are possible. You can send it through email. You can send it by register post. You can even send it all in a WhatsApp. That's not means if your report is not come and your WhatsApp is with a, the, that blue line, that will not give you a, uh, a, a power to claim the ex parte order against that. But may be possible that he will come and appear. So you should be diligent. We were talking initially about the speedy trial. So this must be an uh, mindset of the lawyer that all modes I will, I will use. And for that purpose, you kindly peruse order 14A. And on the basis of order 14A, your first preparation must be proper as a plenty, particularly when you are plenty, your addresses must be proper and the service must be proper. I am talking about Rule 16. Normally we talk about the amendment, but 16 talks about striking out of the pleading. That power is there to the court. Are we using this power? We are not using this power. If there are scandalous, unwantedly, you can find that nowadays in a 50 pages, at least 20 pages are repeated pleadings. So you can point out that remove this pleading, repeated pleading, you can remove the pleadings. And that can be done and so under sections, under order 6, rule 16, there is a power given to the court for striking of the pleading. We should start using this all provisions. Lastly, the amendment. Order 17 and 18. Oh, sorry, Order 6, Rule 17 and 18. Now the amendment is a big issue. You know that basically the, the basic structure should not be changed of the suit. Same like uh, our even uh, in a constitutional amendment, the same principle was there in a Keshavananda Bharti. The basic structure should not be changed. Similarly, in a suit, the basic structure could not be changed. That is the basic theme of the amendment in any legal proceeding. Here also, see Bombay High Court Amendment. Order 6, Rule 17, Central Government Amendment 2002 is there. One amendment to 17, Rule 17, is also of a Bombay High Court. It is on this point that if there is an ex parte order against the defendant in a suit, a defendant is ex parte. And if plaintiff wants to amend the suit, the Bombay High Court amendment says that 
fresh notice of that amendment application should be given to the defendant though he was ex parte this provision is not there in a central amendment in the central cpc if you see this there is no such a provision in order 6 rule 17 whereas in bombay high court amendment rule 17 has this provision that if a defendant is ex parte and if plaintiff wants to amend the suit then he should give a notice to that notice of that amendment application to defendant and after that notice only the amendment application will be considered you got the point now this is a bombay high court amendment on the bombay high court amendment now finally i will tell what is the latest position there is amending act of the civil procedure code 2002 which is on a statute 2002 was amended by an amending act of 2002 in that amending act of 2002 means the instrument by which cpc was amended in 2002 that instrument i am talking there is one section 16 16 in that amending act of 2002 in that section 16 it has been said that the high court and the state amendments which are inconsistent to the central act stands repeal that is section 16 of the amending act of 2002 now this question has gone to bombay high court order 6 rule 17 central act Order six, Rule seventeen, Bombay High Court. These two rules, Rule seventeen, are inconsistent to each other, and therefore the Bombay High Court amendment should stand, repeal. And you will find that there is a judgment of Justice Bazif Tar in two thousand eleven, where it has been said that this will stand, repeal. the bombay high court will, amendment will stand repeal so this is a new angle which must be kept by the practicing advocate in the mind <coughs> and that particular aspect <coughs> is of repeal of the state amendments <coughs> sorry of a high court amendment and therefore <coughs> this aspect of now using order 6 rule 17 is to be only dealt in accordance to the provisions of the central act for using all the other amendments also with as amendments are there <coughs> if high court amendment is inconsistent to the central amendment you need not use that that has stand repeal whether it has been declared by high court or not <coughs> or if opposite party is making any uh, argument on that amendment you can well argue that this particular amendment is inconsistent and therefore it stands repeal so friends i have made certain about the general uh, things of the pleading <coughs> in the plaint only have a focus on two things in order 7 that is rejection of the plaint under order 7 rule 11 if it is rejected plaint is rejected then it is a decree because the definition of a decree entertains that if the plaint is rejected but if it is not accepted order 7 rule 11 application was there was made and it the application was rejected if application is allowed plaint is rejected but if it is not if the application is rejected then that order is not a decree only rejection of the plaint is a decree similarly return of the plaint is an important aspect of order 7 that must be remember as far as order 8 is concerned friends set off and a counter claim two aspects set off is also cross suit but it cannot be equivalent to the counter claim it should be within the pecuniary limits of the suit and in that you can claim certain set off but if you are 
claim is exceeding the pecuniary limit you it will be it will amount to counter claim you will have to pay the stamp duty for that particular purpose with this considering that there is a short time my particular vision about the cpc and particularly about the civil pleading i have placed before you my humble request will be that the pleading is the base and the foundation of the civil trial and for this as work of the pleading we must keep the necessary formats in mind which are there in the cpc the minimum required things of the pleading that must be kept in reading and make your foundation perfect lastly see order 10 once pleading of a plaint and written statement is on record we as a lawyer are forgetting order 10 where rule 1 imposes an obligation on a court to record on exhibit 1 suit which facts pleaded by in a plaint and written statement are admitted facts and which are the denied facts admissions and a denial must be taken by the court if it is taken your burden of evidence will be further reduced and for that purpose along with order 6 7 8 order 10 should be cautiously carefully read by the lawyer used by the lawyer and implemented thank you very much friends